Hello everyone, welcome to the Inside Games Cast. It's May 8th, it's 9.46 in the PM. I'm Lauren Sontag, here with Bruce Green. How you doing, Bruce? Hey, what's going on? I'm, who knows when this will air? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, we got, a, we got a hefty week of content coming up. So I'll have to find an empty gap in there somewhere. Oh yeah, that's true, we do. You're right. Zelda's coming out. Oh baby. Man, oh man. We're, we're on the cusp of Zelda. It's Zelda Eve. You're probably listening to this after Breath of the... Or Tears of the Kingdom came out. And if we're lucky, we're background noise for Tears of the Kingdom right now. Because everybody took the day off. Oh, yeah. They're all playing the game right now instead of doing anything else. Good for you. Uh, but thank you for listening to this podcast. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you can think back on your time before you played Zelda with uh, wistfulness and nostalgia. Because that's where we're lodged right now and it sucks. Do you think it's going to change your life, Lawrence? I hope it does. <laughs> Maybe I won't have to sleep anymore. You know? No. You know? You're still going to have to sleep. You're not a robot. Probably. It doesn't turn you into a robot. But that would be great. I'd get a lot more time to play Zelda then, huh? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you would. <laughs> man, I've been playing Breath of the Wild on Master Mode. I've been watching. That game is... Fu- it's bananas, man. It's a great game, man. It's, it's so a- good. I, I keep forgetting when people say... People are always like, hey, what's your favorite game? Or what's the, you know, what's the best game? Whatever. Ever. And I'm always like... Breath of the Wild is pretty close. Kind I mean, of Breath like, of the Wild. It's kind of the best. It's like, kind of the best. Like Ocarina used to be the one that everybody would go to. How did they beat it again? How? They, they, they made like a Bethesda style game, except everything works. Like it, I mean, <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. You're you can right. break it if you really want to. <laughs> yeah, Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But like how. But generally speaking. Physics yes. stuff. Yeah, it like, all works. Yeah. F- hits each other and usually doesn't fly into space or kill you. Although I have been killed by a lot of physics stuff. But I, I, hey, I asked for it. Things it's fell true. on me. It's true. Somebody threw a rock at my face. Uh, an so, Octorok spit my sword at, back at me and killed me. You're. What you're describing is just a tiny little piece of what Tears of the Kingdom is going to be. You realize that, right? I've been thinking, like, I've been actually dreaming about build it. shit. I know. I've been dreaming about oh. what Tears of the Kingdom, because it's going to be, it's going to, like, immediately show you a bunch of things you never even conceived of. It's a dream maker, Bruce. Well, we could be hyping it up too much. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's going to be, <sighs> we're going to see, like, clips of weird shit for years. Yeah, right? no, yeah, absolutely. Or, or I, I just, maybe, I don't know, maybe it'll be really boring and terrible. No, can, can it be? There's no way. Because they just, they're just they just building on what Breath of the Wild was. Yeah. They're adding more to Breath of the Wild, which already had way more than I thought it did. The only, th- like, I think we're going to get a backlash of low frames. So I think we're probably going to get a lot of people posting clips of like, this is what Zelda looks like. And it's going to be, you know, yeah, it's all 10 choppy. frames a second. That's super choppy like Pokemon. But I, It'll happen. But I think mostly, generally speaking, people are going to be excited about this. I think so. It'll probably sell really well too. Like Zelda's sold okay. They didn't sell great until Breath of the Wild, which was kind of the game to get with Switch. Really? That's really interesting. I didn't yeah. Know I mean, they, they were like million sellers, but Breath of the Wild sold 30 million. Yeah. It was it was another thing. Or 27, something like that. So now that now that there's a ton of Switch owners that bought Breath of the Wild, they all have a Switch already and Breath of the King or Tears of the Kingdom is coming out. Yeah, That's it's, right. It's going to be big. It's going to be huge. I can't wait. I'm really excited too. Yeah. Because we'll all get to join hands and celebrate a game that's good. Well, it's like what we right? did. It's funny because, Lawrence, I don't... Please? I don't mean to get... One time? I don't mean to get political already. Oh, well, that was fast. Um, but we did this with Elden Ring. Yeah, that's true. Everyone got together. Everyone we all shook hands. hands and said, this is a good game. Good job, everyone. Gamer. However, gamer. Good, good. you and I <laughs> tried to play co-op within the first yeah. few days of Elden Ring, and co-op was broken. It's, yeah, it was garbage. Like, it was some of the worst stuff I've ever played. It was unplayable. When you played co-op and they that was an advertised feature for elder yeah. ring but nobody said anything yeah how, so what yeah how, how did that go by politics bruce it's not fair i've uh in a weird way i it's 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 warmed my heart a little bit to see like straight up pol- like capital p politics and i don't mean like <laughs> representation i mean i mean like some things are stinky and oh, everyone yeah. makes fun of them. Yeah. <laughs> Some things everyone likes, so no one says anything bad about them. <laughs> yeah, it's really um, weird. That level, like high school politics, basically. Which is it's, it's strange, because I went to video games to get away from that. Mm-hmm. But now there's enough people in video games. That it's it's popular just, enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, look at that. Video games are dumb, just like everything else. <laughs> That's nice. Because <laughs> we used to be able to, like, <laughs> if Battlefield 4 was bad on launch, we also used to laugh at it yeah. and go, you know what, though? We'll play it in a few weeks. Once it's fixed, we'll play it in a few weeks. Now it's just this constant explosion of rage for anything that doesn't work day one, which again, I completely want you to get a refund and stop pre-ordering games. I'm going to keep saying that. But we used to just sort of laugh at it yeah, and go, oh, well, you know, they screwed it up again. Not anymore. Yeah. 
it's just, yeah, the tone's different. It's getting mad at stuff as a lifestyle. I guess it always was for some people, but now it seems like well, I think it's it, an industry. Not to get too political, but I think it was, <laughs> I think it was specifically like uh, with the 24 hour news cycle. Once that started, mm, maybe we're like, if you're watching all the different news channels, you know, CNN, Fox News, whatever, um, getting angry at that stuff, you do it all the time and that becomes lifestyle. So maybe now it is for video games. I don't know. The same techniques apply too, which is kind of fun. Absolutely. I was uh, just randomly mm. watching clips from a 1996 Amway promotional video. Go figure. <laughs> and it's, it's like the exact same rhetoric, weirdly, that's in kind of like modern political messaging, uh, which is like there's a dream out there. People are preventing you from getting it. Oh, but yeah. all you need is all you need is your stick to itiveness. And and it's straight up one of the dudes was like, you got to ignore what the news media says about Amway. And you got to ignore your doubting relatives. And like, really? Yeah, straight up telling you to shut everything out and just just buy into this one thing. So ignore what your relatives say. Play Zelda, <laughs> please. <laughs> we're all going to, I have a feeling Zelda's going to be great. I think yeah. we're all going to shake hands and we'll call a truce. Yeah. It'll be like a Christmas, Christmas Day. Yeah, Christmas Day. <laughs> In the trenches. In World War II or World War I or whatever it was. And uh, we'll all be like, Zelda is good. I hope so. Yeah. Or we'll just quietly all be playing Zelda. That'd, that'd be the idea. Yeah, I can't wait. Trading tips. Speaking of dark Breath of the Wild tips. You may know this stuff, but it blew my my. I'm probably not going to know. Yeah. What is it? Did you know, Bruce? You can drop bombs while you're gliding. I think I did know that. Actually. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Did you know you could have both bombs out at once? I thought you could only use one or the other. I did not know that. How do you do that? Just drop one and then switch to the other, then use it. They're on separate cooldowns, so you can like throw them separately. How do you blow them both up? Same button? Oh well, you'd have to switch, but yeah, it's like it's L to drop and then L to blow up. Yeah. So you can drop one, switch to the other, drop that, and then blow it up, switch, blow it up. Wow. So you can set up like traps. I like, didn't actually know that. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, I'm I'm doing the, the trials of the sword on master mode, That's which is requiring me. like Rambo level insurgency. Uh, here's another top tip. Did you know that you can you can like dash while you're crouched? No, I did not know that. Dash no, while you're crouched. I, did, did not know that. I have no idea. I don't know though why, why I would I ever do that. It's fast. Like if you're if you're sneaking, you can just like. But dash does it somewhere. wake people up if you dash? It, it creates a little more noise, but not much. I don't. Think. Okay. Did you know that having a shield equipped increases the noise you make while you're crawling around? I think I did know that because you yeah. can hear, right? Because yeah, it like clinks you around. Clinks, yeah, and then it actually matters. It's, this, it's I mean, Zelda. That, well, no, that shit doesn't happen in like. I guess your stealth rating goes down if you're wearing heavy armor or whatever. But don't give it credit. It like makes a noise <laughs> yeah. in the game, and then the noise people hear it, and they look at you like it's just so much more natural and real. And it's because the developers of, I mean, specifically Zelda at, at Nintendo, are thinking of all the things you're thinking about. They're mm. saying if like, well, what happens if you're crouched and you want to go faster? Could you dash? And and somebody probably got down in the office and was like. <laughs> Could I? And like they do it and it causes a little more noise and they're like, yeah, you could do it. And it's the same with like, well, what happens if you're wearing a big heavy shield and you were trying to sneak? It would be loud, right? Put the trash can lid on Toshiro. It would clank. Wow, that's loud. Yeah. And, <laughs> and they, were, they probably were experimenting and being like, well, it's loud. Put it in the game. So Jeez. that's what they do. I mean, like that's what, you know, the, the, the best game designers, they, they like, it's, I don't know how to say it. It's, they've polished this like uh, bespoke experience for you that's the way i spell i felt i felt about playing uh, dead space and dead space remake mm. to me that just feels like it's like they like every single hallway is just like crafted with so much care um that's why i love breath of the wild because it feels like that but yeah and it's open world oh man yeah i can't wait yeah sorry the game's already out probably when they're listening to this so it's funny you bring up um one last thing maybe <laughs> uh playing through breath again has, has really blown me away with how the variety of technu techniques they used to be like, hey, there might be something over here. Like, hey, look over here. Because most games just put a big old marker there. They're like, there's something over there. Just go there, yeah. So just go there and talk to the person and they'll give you a reward. But Brett, like Elden Ring used a few of them actually, like little yeah. sparkles off yeah. of a track or footsteps that lead off or, or just like inviting scenery, like a pathway that goes down with trees around it. But man, Breath does all kinds of things. Just like a random kid being like, hey, I found something weird, follow me. And then you just follow him and it puts you on this breadcrumb trail. That's right. Or that like everything has multiple points of entry depending on where you're coming at it from. It's either an NPC telling you about it. It's a weird sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the light hitting something in an interesting way. No, you're right. Huh. So, so Tears, I'm, I'm fascinated to death about how they've laid out the content in that because if it's just, if it's a million more really clever techniques to signpost their content, or if there's just like giant dungeons. I don't know. Apparently there's supposed to be dungeons now. Or oh, bigger really? Ones. I don't know. People in chat were saying it, but maybe they 
Maybe they had another understanding. I hmm. It could be anything. I, I just want to see all the smart ideas. I, there's going to be a ton of them. I keep thinking that they're going to... Like, they're going to encourage you to put everything together. All the objects that you can find. Put them all together. And that's the... I mean, like, it was kind of like how I get lost cooking in Breath of the Wild. Where, I, like, I would cook for four hours or whatever. I'd sit down and be like, what about this combination? And then you cook it. And it was like, oh, what about this combination? I think that's what it's going to be. Where I, I'm going to go and, like, find... I don't know. Uh, what, are they, what are they called? Bow goblin, goblins? Yeah. Uh, whatever they're called. I'm going to find a horn from them and then like an eye from them. Like kind of a, a relatively rare item and be like, what happens if I put it on a bow and then I shoot it? Like, what's it going to do? Like, I can't wait for that to just to get an item and be like, wait a minute, if I put this on my, my spear, what is it going to do? If I glue this to my raft or something? Oh my gosh. How, yeah. can I, how, how do you make... Oh man, I, I could I could go forever. Again, the game's probably already out, so everybody's already doing it. But yeah. yeah, to me that's the magic intersection. It's a single player game where you can explore your own creativity, but there's an innate social element where once you you find something that's wild, you want to tell people you about show it. People, show people, yeah. yeah. Which is why I'm really excited that this game is hitting with stream culture. Elden Ring was pretty cool in that regard too. You could see people's weird characters and builds, and see somebody who's just in a land you've never seen before. But, man, Tears is going to be next level. That's right. Somebody can be exactly where you are. And to some degree, this was, to a bre- this was true Breath of the Wild. But somebody can be in the exact same level you were, playing it in a totally different way, or bypassing it entirely, or just driving a giant penis directly through it. <laughs> oh, it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, which, which makes me think maybe spoilers won't be that big of a deal, really. I guess there's yeah. going to be cutscenes and plot beats. And people... I think this is about new releases because I wonder how much of it a factor is in what we do. Oh, for streaming, right. Yeah, when yeah. people are like, oh, I don't want to see that until I play it. But uh, once you get through something, gosh, the same thing could be done a million different ways. So it's almost like spoilers don't exist. Not, like yeah, that. not for like big open world games. Like That's why the people, I feel like people like watching Skyrim or even new newer open world games. is because you kind of like just go through them and it doesn't, the story sort of doesn't matter. I mean, Zelda's story is fun. I like, I like Zelda's story and I actually do care about it a little bit. But... I'm not there for the story. It's fun and it's neat. And I, I will be like, oh, fun lore. But I won't. I'm not playing it for the story. Um, I just can't wait to, you know, mash a bunch of stuff together. Yeah, so. I'm curious. I think people will. I honestly think in this one, specifically Zelda, a lot of people are going to be like, I don't want spoilers. I'm not going to watch streams, I think. And then like they'll give it a week or two and then people will be playing. Um, that's what I think. But we'll see. I think that's valid. Yeah. Yeah, this this is weird because it's like it's a sequel to the Zelda that itself was kind of already story wise a sequel to a game that never really happened. Oh yeah, like, where like yeah. everyone lost, which is cool, makes it kind of Zelda two ish, I guess. But yeah, I don't know where it goes from here. Ganon's back, I guess. Of he's course, back. he always got to come back. Ganon's wow, Ganon. he's back, and boy, did he make some dungeons. Yeah, you got to get out there and do something about that. He also looks great. Lawrence, you forgot about how sexy Ganon is. Oh, yeah, he's hot now. He's got like a real body instead of just being... He's daddy. Uh, malice or blight or That's whatever. That's right. Yeah, he's he's super daddy. What is it with Nintendo, man? <laughs> suddenly they they suddenly understood that everyone wants to look at hot people and they just put hot people in everything. You know, uh, that's true all the time <laughs> of television and movies and... Yeah, but else? they weren't hot before. I think... what? When did Nintendo go horny? Was it Xenoblade? Might have been Xenoblade. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. But like Fire Emblem, horny as shit. Hold on. Now, Zelda was like, I would say Zelda was attractive in Ocarina. Like as a kid playing it, I was like, she's cute. Yeah, but she didn't have like. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're She didn't have meat. (laughs) There's some thick Nintendo people out there. Well, but Ganon, I mean, like if he is the the biggest of all bad guys, he's going to be fucking ripped. He was pretty jacked up. He's going to be super jacked and like super sexy because he's bad yeah he's a bad boy you're right about that how did you where'd you land on the fairies in 64 zelda they screamed a lot they did but it was weird still like they they're pointy and also it was the same with breath where like yeah the fairies would go ah! oh. Oh. So it was like <laughs> am i attracted to this or not like i don't know I, big woman she needs a lot of maintenance though you got to <laughs> swipe that credit card to get them to wake up <laughs> I need to find more of those fountains, man. I don't, They're great. I only those fountains like are great, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> man, I was ah. So, we're, yeah, we're pretty, clear, pretty, pretty clearly excited for Zelda. Can't wait. Despite being a little traumatized by mean people on the internet. I'm so excited. Nobody's going to be mad about <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom. We got to find a clickable headline, though, Bruce. You know we're going to. There isn't one. It's bad. No, we have to lie and say it's bad. Then people will click on the video. 
Yeah, but we can't lie. That's the thing. <laughs> That's the thing is that they don't like Zelda would be perfect if only it didn't have this. <laughs> People on the internet, they want to see their opinion reflected in a title. That's true. And that's where we go wrong because we do that with the title and thumbnail. But then when they come in and watch the video, go, wait a minute. Yeah, swerving on them. They, hold on. They've actually uh, put some nuance into the argument. Not validating your opinion. And instead, we're not yelling at it. So now I know. We're sorry. It'll be easy with Zelda, though, because everyone will agree it's good. So we just title the video. It's good. You and know what we did with Elden Ring? Not very good. I'll tell you this. Oh, yeah. One episode that worked with Elden Ring on Inside Games was uh, we said something to the to the effect of, Oh, that's what it was. Who hates Elden Ring? Yeah. Who's so hating we Elden say, Ring? Who hates Tears of the Kingdom? The answer is no nobody. No what? But you've got to watch eight minutes and one second to get there. <laughs> no, we don't ever do that. No, we don't. I, Lawrence, you always talk about this like we're playing the YouTube game and we really don't ever do no, that. No, we do don't. It? Well, yeah. people don't think that. Like, like 2%. We, we don't ever, ever, ever try and make an episode eight minutes and one second long. I, we've never done that. If, if anything, we just made yeah, we an actually, episode that's 25 minutes long, just so you know. We also made a 7 minute, 56, 56 minute second. Oh, did we? Uh, yeah, like there was one that was like 2 seconds under. Oh, I didn't realize that. That's why That's why we haven't been able to uh, to double in size. I know, because I saw I saw a lot of those comments on the Redfall video where they're like, these dudes are a corporate, these do all they're in for the money. And I was always like, Love we are show. not in it for the, like, I was like, boy, if, if only they could see <laughs> how much money YouTube was paying us. <laughs> that's the only possible explanation, Bruce. <laughs> Money corrupts all. In it for Even the games money. journalism. Jeez. Oh my gosh. Who's gotten rich off games journalism? Don't say Jeff Keighley because he was rich before games journalism. That's true. I don't... Who... Is there anyone? I don't know that anyone's gotten rich off of games journalism. We're not even journalists. I don't know about rich. Yeah, we're not. Uh, I think the only people I can think of... Like, so the, the the racket is you're in games journalism and until you either get a job in PR or you go uh, contract, you you do like... Um, like hosting and stuff. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, I feel like more people do mock reviews and stuff. Well, not more. I really have no idea how many. I'm just thinking about that that uh, Phil Spencer comment about Redfall mock reviews. Uh, that's what we need to get into, Bruce. We need to start writing mock reviews. Oh, do they I have actual journalists write those mock reviews yeah for them? i didn't know that yeah they don't publish them so nobody knows what happens but yeah huh that's uh wow. that's how it, that's how you get that real money um that corporate cash that's really interesting i didn't know that yeah i've never gotten into that racket i don't know how i want to i don't i, I don't think i've ever even known anybody that's done that that's yeah. that's why i'm actually surprised i've heard like link like friends of friends that are involved with that game okay so maybe i should hit him up do you want to do you want to review games, Bruce? Do you want to do for Microsoft? Yeah. They're gonna, so wait, do they pay me like a lot of money if it's good? Oh, I have no idea. They, <laughs> I mean, they pay. I guess they pay you a, whatever rate just for the review to give them some idea about how real games journalists will receive it. And then maybe if I go like, if I go, hey Phil, like, yeah. hey, how about maybe uh, I'll bring up that percentage, a uh, couple percentage points, you give me an extra two thousand bucks. <laughs> But it's just for them. I know. That's it's just a turn. I, mean, I, I, I need the money. <laughs> Maybe that's why Redfall scored a few points higher. We got to be... Lawrence, we're doing it for the money. Clearly, we're, oh, we're getting right. rich off this podcast. Right. It doesn't have to make sense. We're just... We're getting rich. Scraping in the cash. That's what we... And we're too soft on those game devs too, Lawrence. We got we're too, we got to be harder on Got to keep them accountable to us. That's, that's right. right. We got to be harder on them. Every... <laughs> Every half week, they're clicking on Inside Games to, to see if we've given them a clean bill of health for the week. <laughs> Sorry, Arcane. <laughs> Try harder next week. <laughs> next week. Oh, man. Video games are awesome, dude. Yeah, they are. They're great. Oh, speaking of, I got to go to a preview event. This is something I want to do a little bit more because I'm, I'm feeling like I'm cooped up a little bit, staying, too, staying home and gaming a little too much. I got to go other places and play video games oh, there. Oh, it's like gaming too much, yeah, Lawrence. I what? I took my Steam Deck so I could play on the plane. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, but I went to Capcom's offices in San Francisco and played Street Fighter VI. Sick. Sick. Yeah. I didn't get to stay the whole time, so I didn't get to, like, really dive into all the stuff they had to show. So apologies about that. No, you were wearing a shirt, too. Yeah, that, that was cool. a kind of an accident, but I'll own it. I didn't wear this there, if that helps. That's good. You shouldn't ever wear the band shirt to the band. No, I know that much. Never do that. Uh, Street Fighter 6 is pretty rad. Again, character is hot as hell. Super hot. Capcom's, the hottest. Capcom's on something, man. I don't know. No, that's, I'm telling you, that's, a, that's not, they're not on anything. That's what you're supposed to do. Make video game characters hot across the board. Make, yeah, you're right. It's a, Again, television movies. What are we talking about? You're right. Everybody should be hot. Make them hot. Well, they got the message. Everyone's hot. Uh, I guess a couple of the things that really stood out to me that I really like are some of the, some of the onboarding tools for newer players. 
That's me. Yeah. Because I would never play this game otherwise. So convince me how to play it. Ooh, okay. Because I don't want to get anywhere near online play. I might play the campaign. Okay. Because I enjoy the campaign usually in fighting games, but I'll never touch online. So. Mm. <laughs> Unless you convince me otherwise. Well, I don't know about convincing you to play online. Oh, okay. <laughs> but perhaps I can convince you that Street Fighter Six has an array of tools to make you a better Street Fighter player if that's what you choose to be. I mean, I would like to be all right at a fighting game for once because okay. I never I never have been. Well, uh, one of the things I think is super cool about it then is, uh, I mean, it has your basic tutorial that walks you through the absolute fundamentals of Street Fighter. But each character has a player guide where they kind of explain to you in just words the phil philosophy behind a character. This is what they're good at. These are the ranges you want to stay at. And then they even walk through all of their basic moves and special moves and kind of tell you all of the circumstances they'd be useful. Then they have even little demos saying like, you can put this here and here. And when somebody jumps at you, you ball them up or you just uh, do a feint to make them think you're going to do it and then follow up with something like this. So I thought that was super cool. cool. I always thought it was a bit odd that sort of you kind of have to breed the tea leaves of a character's moveset or play with them for a while to figure out what kind of character they are. Sometimes those hints are baked into the design of a character. You know, he's big, he's big, slow. Right, he's slow yeah. he might be a grappler. But uh, now they just have a whole thing just saying like, this is what this character does. Try doing these things and this is the way we figure you should play. So that's, that's cool. cool. And then they have a combo guide and stuff. So you can like run through all the moves and stuff. But yeah, the player guide really, really captured me. So I think that's awesome. And then yeah, hopefully an open world mode or a single player mode will get you more familiar with the controls so that you feel like going online and just getting brutalized. <laughs> By some four-year-old that's just rolling their hand across their controller. <laughs> I have the worst memories of playing. Actually, I'm sorry. The best memories of playing <laughs> these. I'm playing fighting games with my friends because that's what it was. One of my there was this. Actually, I think you've all oh, you've met one of them. I'm not going to say the name. I'll tell you afterwards. But you met one of them, and we there was this uh, like honestly, it was this historical legendary rivalry between these two people because. We would play, obviously, we'd sit down and play video games, and this happened every weekend or whatever, whenever we get together, over years. I mean, we're talking like 10 years of time. And every time, let's call him, let's call him A and N, all right? A and N would get together, and we would play whatever, Soul Calibur, it didn't matter, Killer Instinct, um, and N fancied himself a fighting game, not aficionado, but like somebody who's pretty good at a fighting game, right? Okay, kind of like right. you. I would assume you're pretty good at Street Fighter. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, but but N would say no. Like I've been, I've been practicing. Play for a while. I play. I would play at home, and like he, I he would. He'd, and so then he'd sit down with A, and A was like, "I've never played this game before." <laughs> <laughs> and 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 they would hand, we'd hand them a controller, and then they would they would play, <laughs> and A would always beat N, always every time, and uh, <laughs> and we'd all laugh because. He would button mash. He would just sit there and do this, right? He'd literally just take a controller and squeeze it. And he would win. And N would always be like, 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 like he, and I understand, by the way, I don't fault him at all. I com completely get it that this dude who was practicing this fighting game could not beat somebody who would just do this. Um, <laughs> so we call him a professional button masher because that's what he was. He was okay. a professional button. Could I get through Street Fighter as a professional button masher? Is that a possibility? Ooh, probably not. The, okay. Well, if you're playing right. other button mashers, yes. But one of the cooler things I think about Street Fighter VI is that there's like a there's a really basic rock, paper, scissors baked into the core fighting mechanic. Okay. So if you're just throwing out attacks willy-nilly, there's there's I uh, can't remember the specific name for it. But essentially you go blah, you go blah, and you like charge up, and it gives you armor for two hits, and then you just bash the fuck out of somebody That's cool Ooh. so if you're sitting there if somebody's just like blah, 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 yeah. just hitting buttons you do that you're gonna hit them right through that hit huh. the counter is if you do that after they do so you go brah and you start charging up then you do your thing later brah they hit you your armor absorbs it and then you bash the fuck out of them oh interesting so essentially yeah if somebody's just mashing buttons at you there's one move that you hit two buttons that's a fundamental counter to what they're doing okay but they can catch on wait for you to do it and then like bait it out and then hit you and that kind of kicks off the cycle also throws are kind of the the third rock paper scissor aspect there right uh you can throw somebody out of the startup to the charge um or a bunch of other things if they're just turtling and blocking and stuff so if you understand the super basics then if somebody's just trying to roll buttons on you, yeah, you could theoretically shut them down. Oh, okay. 
All right. Just by hitting buttons over and over again. <laughs> it just depends on the different buttons. So that's another cool part of six is it does seem like there's a lot of they tried to bake some rules into the basic layer of the game that everyone can pick up and have fun with, mm -hmm. but then can be used by master level 9000 IQ chess players as like a mental game with the other player. Cool. So All right. maybe if you can get get your homies back together on six, that would be a uh, boy. Oh boy. What a what a. I should put that. I should actually make the tournament for them. That would be so cool. Like put, put basically put them against each other on a bunch of different fighting games and see if they've progressed. Because <laughs> I'm positive A has not played any of those games over the over the last few years. Maybe N has. N, you know. Oh, I hope so. Maybe N has, but I don't think A has. I'm pretty sure A has not. Trying to keep sharp. Uh, yeah, he was yeah, just so it. good at button mashing. We, we and, and honestly, we didn't know how he was so good either. <laughs> it would just be like because he just be just like taking I don't your know. breath away. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, he, there were times he would do that. He would look away <laughs> and beat him. <laughs> and I was always like, this is like, I, how insulting must that have been for N? I felt terrible for him because how, like, that's got to be the worst to have this person who just had never touched this game beat him over and over. Got to make you rethink a couple of things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> anyway, humbling moments. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, let's see here. I have a couple of notes down here. Oh, yeah. Um, hmm. What do you want to talk about? I want to throw back to Zelda. Okay. I want to, I want to hear about your Zelda stories, Bruce. Throughout life, do you have any interesting Zelda stories? I always yeah, get nostalgic yeah. about Zelda because to me, it's yeah, it's one of the few franchises, like I guess like Mario, that's still going and still good. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can give you... Let's see here. I got... So, Ocarina of Time came out in was 98? 98, I think. 98, right? Yeah. 98 was kind of like one of my favorite years because <clears throat> I graduated high school then. Um, and uh, 98, yeah, let's see. 98, I graduated high school and was going into college. And so, I had like uh, an extra long summer. I had like four months. I don't remember when this game came out. Um, but... I rem all I remember is going over to my friend's house all the time. Like I was there every day and uh, I would go to Steve's house and Steve was playing Ocarina of Time. Okay. And we sa I would sit, I sat, them with, uh, sat there with him for days as we tried to beat it, how to try to beat the game, like how to beat the game and like what parts of the, what, you know, what temples and stuff like that. And the music is just burned into my brain uh, from that time because it was a great summer, but also this game was just amazing. And I don't, I don't think we realized how good it was then. We knew it was great, but we didn't realize it would stand the test of time and we'd still be talking about it 20 years later. Um, so I have fantastic memories of Ocarina of Time and I've replayed it obviously over the years, but it's just so good. Gosh, I mean, like it still kind of looks like garbage, but it's so great. It doesn't matter. It's like Fallout New Vegas looks like total trash, <laughs> but Fallout New Vegas is so much fun. Um, and then also Breath of the Wild was the first game I ever streamed. The first really? thing I ever streamed. Oh, that's ever. awesome. Yeah, Breath of the Wild in 2017. And uh, specifically, James and Elise were the ones that bought me the game. And they said, you should, you should stream it. And I went, all right, yeah, why not? Um, and loved it. Loved streaming it. Um, really, like, it was one of those things I just didn't expect for me to like. <laughs> um, and I loved it. So that was, yeah, it was the first, first thing I ever streamed. So I'm really excited to play Tears of the Kingdom and, like, you know, kind of go full circle on that. So... It's interesting well, that you didn't you didn't expect liking streaming. I uh, didn't no. Just, just the why didn't it appeal to you, or what about it surprised I, you? I think probably because there's this is actually a really interesting thing that I have seen a lot in criticisms of streaming, especially my streaming and or our streaming coming from Funhouse, which was everyone's like you know like they're always like, this is not an edited video. I don't like it. It's boring, and uh, I understand that point of view because when I first started streaming, I was like. Why would this be entertaining? I can't figure it out. I was so hmm. so into the YouTube mindset that mm -hmm. I had not pulled myself away from it and tried to do the longer uh, longer form content. So to me, when I first started, I, I just like I loved playing the game because it was great, but I didn't expect to interact with chat and have chat like it. Um, I thought I was like maybe I'll I'll probably be bad at it. It seems really boring. People are gonna you know get tired of it after a while. You knew better because you had been streaming for years at that point. Um, so then that's kind of when I discovered, I was like, wait a minute, this is, there is an, there a hundred percent. There is a, there's just like any creative content, there's legitimacy to it. Um, and you can get better at it too. That's another thing. Like it's, I was clear. I was not good at it when I was doing it. 
um, because I just started. So, uh, so yeah, that's, I think that's something that I really kind of opened my eyes to that content that I otherwise would never have done. Mm. So, yeah. Do you think you're going to be, this is something I've wondered about because okay. I agree that, that it like streaming or hosting a stream is a skill that can improve over time. Absolutely. Do you think in 20 years you're going to be like next level at it? <laughs> Are you going to be Johnny Carson? I don't know. Territory? I'm not sure that. I don't know what that looks like. Nick, nobody's done it that long, right? It's impossible. No, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, technology you're, hasn't been there. Nick, you're correct. Nobody's. I guess radio show hosts are the closest that I can I, mean, I, I did that for years. I was, a, oh. I was a DJ for years. But I mean, but as a DJ, you're only listening to things. And even then, you're just staring at a wall. That's I just remember I just like stare out a window and, and DJ. Uh, and also, by the way, as a DJ, you very rarely talk for any longer than like five minutes, even in a morning show. Uh, if you're a podcaster, it's completely different. But um, yeah, I, I'm... I would assume I'm going to get better at it, but I don't know what I will get better at specifically skill wise. Cause I know this is going to, I'm sure I'm going to get some angry comments about this, but I know that I'm better at video games now than when I started. Oh, well positive. How could, how could it be any other way? I'm positive that I'm better at video games. There's than no way you got worse playing video games all day, right? I mean, I hope not. How would that even be possible? Yeah. But I know that I am better at doing things in video games because I didn't play video games all the time before. I would play them, you know, an hour or two a week or something, or maybe some Overwatch, whatever. Mm. But now I'm playing every genre for hours at a time. So. What do you, how do you think that skill manifests? Um, you mean like in other parts of life or? Well, just how do you think general video game skill increasing? How do you think that that like presents itself? How do you, how do you see your skill improving? Well, I, I become Lawrence. So oh. I see the code. I see. Okay. Because now i can go like oh well there's this like there's this cube here like i know that i'm gonna have to move the cube and probably move it to certain spots where i need to climb versus before well maybe i walk into a room and see the cube and it sort of just gla just glaze right over um and now i'm starting to see the code like our own lawrence sontag i see yeah where you know what part of this is going to be a video game right you know what you're going to interact with it's uh, a good a good example of it is did you ever watch, this is I think for old cartoons, but did you ever watch like an old cartoon and you would see, obviously the character would be moving and then the background would be flat. However, if you looked, you could see parts of the background that you knew would move if they were trying to hide things because you could see that it was animated. But you're like, well, I know that's going to move. You're just waiting for it because you'd see, watch cartoons so much. Um, that's kind of what it's like. Oh, okay. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're starting to see behind the veil a little bit. Yeah, which is great. Because it's all made by humans. So. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's funny you bring that up because a lot of people... I remember even back at Machinima, uh, on, the, on the written side of Inside Gaming, talking about some of that stuff and people looked at me like I was weird because I was talking about game design. Yeah. And I was like, what do you, you guys not think about like how games are made or the way that content's presented to like make you look at it? And I remember one of the members on the set was like, dude, no, that ruined... Like, I don't want to do that. It, the games are magical. Why would you want to ruin that? And I, I was a little disappointed, but I also kind of understand. Sure. But, but also if you're like, I feel like if you're at a level where you're trying to produce content about games, I think that would imply a deeper like knowledge, a, yeah. yeah, intellectual commitment. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It's like if you're going to make content about film, you'd probably want to know how cameras work. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe no, that's true. Don't know. I, well, it's inter interestingly you, that you bring that up because I, uh, I, I want to go in blind. Like, I, I like mm. to not know so that, you know, like, well, when there's yellow tape on the wall, you're probably going to climb it. But ideally, well, maybe I don't know. So then that, that's kind of a surprise. I have to solve that puzzle when I get there. Jedi Survivor is actually a pretty good example of that. Um, have you, you ever played? Have you like played for much? an hour. Okay. I, I tabled it because I wanted to play through Breath of the Wild again really oh, badly. Okay. All right. But that's going to get lost in your. No, it can't. No, Jedi Survivor is going to get I lost. I can't. Well, I you, love, I love, I love respawn. I can't, I can't. I know it's going to get lost. Here's the kingdom's coming out. Here's the kingdom's coming out. Well, you got to play Jedi Survivor. This anyway. has been stressing me out, Bruce. Well, you got to play it, dude. It's great. <laughs> I got to play it. It's awesome. Uh, anyways, <laughs> the like all of the different uh, traversal, mm. they do a good job of kind of making it blend in. But like, occasionally you'll see it. But it's not like Uncharted, where like it's just they've lined walls with yellow tape, and you're like, oh, that's where I go. Uh, I think Jedi Survivor did a pretty good job of like hiding it a little bit, but still making it so that you sort of have to like walk into a room and sort of solve that puzzle a little bit. Okay. Know. Yeah. Is there an NPC that tells you where to look like five seconds after walking? In? 
<laughs> no, no God, not man. at all. That was a trend I was not enjoying. <laughs> like when I when that stuff started happening, I was like, mother. Like there was a one way mirror somewhere, and people on the other side of a room that just couldn't stand people getting <laughs> getting lost in a room for thirty seconds. Actually, probably what it was is like they could see people's moods start to drop off when they had to circle the same room three times. Absolutely. That's totally what it was. Yeah. Very, very mechanical game design. But hey, if it works, it works. Lawrence, do you, you, do you have any Zelda memory? I'd love to hear your Zelda oh, memories. I got a few. You no, know, it's funny you bring up the game revision because that was like one of the first times that I realized that I was developing it. Um, my sister was playing Ocarina of Time, I think. And, uh, and she was stuck. She was like, I need a small key, but I don't know where it is. So I was like, oh, just pull up the map. And she like scrolled through a few floors and I was like, it's in that room. And and it's because it was away from other things that had che treasure in them. And it was kind of big and there wasn't a chest in it yet that she had opened. Mm -hmm. So she's like, how the how did you know that? So she went over there and like there was a puzzle in there she didn't do. There was a key. I was just like, oh, it's just, you know, it's kind of logic. They tend to spread out the objectives you need to make you go to all the corners of the dungeon. That was a very obvious room that didn't have anything that you had done in it so mm -hmm. and it made me think about that moment because it seemed obvious to me but it you know that was like i could see see the experience through her eyes and and like okay somebody hasn't played this game before for one but also <laughs> well you'd already played the game well yeah but i didn't remember that one it was like a couple of years after oh okay, right, out. Right. but yeah, but yeah. <laughs> like i just cleared the dungeon i'm just waiting for her <laughs> Are you lost? Are you lost? It well, actually, I was younger, so it might have been that bad. But there was that. And then I remember one of my earliest memories of Zelda was renting it. But that was like I was so young that I didn't have all my like my logic hadn't really clicked into place yeah, yet. Yeah. But that's actually a pretty magical time to play Zelda. Maybe not Zelda one, because that game is scary to a, for, for me as a child. It was anyway. Hmm. The music's really ominous. It is, yeah. And right. it's like it's big and you can get lost. You can get lost. Everything wants scary to, to get lost. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know what you're doing and no one talks to you. Anyway, uh, I remember there was one save file that had like all the items on it. And I was like, what the hell is this? It, it was almost like a different game. It's all these crazy. I didn't even know what they were because the little glyphs were a little weird for me to read as a kid. But I remember like loading up that save and playing around with all the items and be like, ah, this is so fun. This game rules. Uh, and then. I remember for some reason like going to the options to delete the file and then my brain was like what are you doing don't hit these buttons you want this here and then I was like doot doot and deleted the oh. deleted the save oh no and the entire time my brain was like you need to stop that but I did it anyway and then I just like dropped the controller and realized that I deleted the save that had all the cool items on it oh and I cried yeah I was, I was so stressed yeah well, that's gone forever. Yeah, I felt really bad because I imagine that like there's somebody out there who was really, really good at Zelda and they got all the items and all they wanted to do was rent it again so they could continue their save. But, but, they, would, but they would have had to get the copy that they rented. Though. Yeah. Well, there was only like one. Oh, there was? Yeah, it was a pretty, it was a pretty small town. Lawrence, you screwed up another child. Real bad. <sighs> I mean, it was probably an adult, right? There's no way a kid could get good at Zelda. I mean, they may have played hundreds of hours of it. And you deleted it. Shit. Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, well, hopefully I've made up for it with uh, all of my contributions to gaming culture. I would, I would think that, yes, uh, you've been uh, trying to make over, up for it over the last 20 years and done a great job. <laughs> <laughs> Some, someday. Someday I'll feel the same. Until then, it's more cold sweats and night terrors. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, that sucks. I, I remember pretty explicitly the overwhelming sensation of playing video games before your like perceptions had really sharped in yeah like when you could just get really synaptically lost in a game well it's that's what i was just talking about before where it's like you play so much actually it, something whenever i play games with you and they're horror games it's hard for you to get scared at them because you know that they're a video game like you kind of know how they play out i'm also tough I'm a tough guy. Well, you are a big tough I'm guy. Big tough yeah, dude. That's so. true. But I'm also I, see, I, feel I am also a big tough guy. That's yeah. You are. But a big I tough like dude. to get scared. Mm -hmm. So I think it's fun to get scared in a video game. So, however, uh, since you play, you played so many video games, you know. I mean, yeah, of course we know how they're going to play out, right? But it's still fun to get scared. So you sort of have to suspend your disbelief or suspend your video game logic a little bit and be like, I'm, I'm walking through a haunted house right now. I'm not actually. Uh, you know, like, I don't know that the ghost is going to spawn over there and like, you know, it'll blink in and out toward me and like it, none of that shit. Just throw that all away and hope that you get scared because if you think about it as a video game, you won't get scared and it won't be fun. 
Um, that's kind of why I was I was thinking about that with horror games because horror games is a good example of like if you don't if you don't have that video game logic baked into your brain you will, you'll have a blast you'll have so much fun um, but if you're like Lawrence you may not have as much fun because you know that it's a video game so I just like I don't know there there aren't a ton of good video or horror video games I mean recently there's a like there's a, a couple of like obviously phasmophobia is really that's yeah. a great video game phasmophobia is superb um it and like um mortuary's assistant did you play that i haven't played that yet really good oh i really wanted to play that it's really well uh, constructed and again it's a video game but but it's super fun um and they do a really good job of doing some kind of like really crazy creepy stuff that you're like how do they do this um it's really neat uh there's there's lots of really good horror games i think re- especially recently Th- those are really good indie horrors that are on Steam. So I'm into it. Yeah, yeah, but it's too tough. It's too tough. For this I know world. you're a big tough guy. It's, it's just hard like out me. There. You're a big tough guy, and I, you don't get. We're both big tough guys. That's what I say. I say over and over. I don't get scared of anything. Um, it's true, but it's really fun to get scared <laughs> in a horror game. It really is. Speaking of scary, Bruce. Uh oh. I thought this was kind of funny. I <laughs> this is scary. <laughs> I enjoyed tracking this stuff because to me, it's more interesting how people react to stuff than the thing itself. But yeah, Resident Evil 4 added this thing where you can just buy weapon upgrades. Yeah. <laughs> so it's pay to win. I mean, there was a they actually did that a little bit before. There was like a treasure map you could buy that would give you additional treasure to make it easier to buy upgrades. Yeah. Now you can just buy upgrades. And if news of this came out before the game came out. Oh, people would be flipping their shit. They'd be so mad. But it came out, it's really good, and they added it a couple of weeks after. So is this but is this for PvP? No, there's well, no, there is no PVE. That's what I thought. Yeah, it's for PVE. Huh. Well, if this had come out before and we did a report on it, I would have been like, "Who gives a fuck? It's PVE. <laughs> Don't do it." Yeah, but be before you could uh, cheat codes were in the game, and now you got to buy them. Okay, they're nickel and diamond, you Bruce. They are absolutely they are. Of yeah, course they are. they are. Actually, they are. Yeah. Don't spend the money. I don't understand why this is such a weird philosophy for oh. people. Just don't spend it. Needing to hold the line. Don't don't spend the cash. If you don't like it, don't spend the money. I well, don't why. Amusingly, that's kind of what this was. It just came and went. And some people like, oh, they clicked on it on Reddit, but that was it. So yeah. System working as intended, provided you don't make you don't accidentally make yourself enemy number one. Or like Yeah, it's I'm noticing a lot more I guess I guess this is my ultimate point, is I'm noticing a lot more uh sophistication in how games package news they know will not be received super well by a very right. engaged set which so. is which but that's i mean good for capcom yeah on doing that that's actually really clever yeah so. i agree i thought that was neat just wanted to, to shout that out i uh, i appreciate you shouting that because it'd be like if suicide squad the new suicide squad game had like you know they're gonna have some fucking stupid battle pass or whatever right but if they had not done the battle pass i think we talked about this on our episode if they had waited two months released the game and been like hey have fun enjoy the game and then two months later like there's a battle pass i don't think yeah. people would have complained or just make sure that battle pass is not in anything anyone sees early on right uh which may have actually been their intention i don't actually know it was just like preview footage right where somebody saw a screen that had the battle pass on it yep so it's it's a bummer yeah if don't show any screens with loot don't show any screens of the battle pass <laughs> Uh, just focus on like cool action and high energy trailers with goofy moments. And if that's all anyone sees until the game comes out, we might be good. So yeah, it's it's just weird because like we know that because we're we like kind of have finger on the pulse a little bit about what people are uh, uh, exhausted with, I guess. But man, that must be so tricky for people uh, to, who work in game dev studios and stuff who weren't like trawling through comments on Reddit and YouTube and Twitter every day. <laughs> Although maybe they are. That's the point of that's the point of like a community manager. Of knowing, yeah. Yeah. Are people are people really upset about looter shooters? I don't think they're upset. They're just they're just tired of them. They're are, saturated. Well, are but is that is that the vocal minority? Are they mm. because looter shooters are still selling. People are still buying those. I mean, Destiny is, you know, one of the biggest I think games probably of all time at this point, in the sense that it's like been making money for fifteen years or whatever. I think High on Life actually did pretty well, I think. Had pretty decent numbers. That was a Game Pass. Yeah. 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 Game Pass. I, well, I was looking at Steam numbers, actually. Oh, on Steam. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and I know that single... Because single-player game currently, right now, that's where all the, I think, prestige is. Is like, 
you know, we're uh, like, wow, I can't believe they've, they have only made a game with no microtransactions good for them. Like Johnny Survivor is truly that. It really is just a straight single player game. Um, and I applaud them for making no microtransactions. You zero. can't buy anything. As far as I know, no, which is pretty awesome. And by the way, when you beat the game, all of the cosmetics are unlocked, which is awesome. Anyways, um, that rules. So, uh, I know that that's kind of where the prestige lies. However, is that where the audience lies? I don't know. I haven't done enough research on this to, but I've been thinking about it with Redfall coming out since it was a looter shooter. And I was like, well, clearly there's a market for this. They would never have made this game otherwise ever in a million years would they have pitched this. And then somebody would have been like, well, no, nobody wants leader shooters. Like they didn't know. They were like, yeah, they these make a fuckload of money. Yeah. When they greenlit that like four years ago or three years ago, it was the right call. Absolutely. Yeah. I, that's what's super tough is you make all your creative decisions. It's like five years before a game hits. And at the end of that cycle, when somebody's like, oh, I'm so exhausted of looter shooters. <laughs> no one knew there'd be 35 of them. I mean, I guess you can, you can, you can predict if it's something's hot now that it'll be saturated five years down the road. But what's the alternative? Come up with an entirely new property, an entirely new system, no, an entirely true. new set of mechanics. Then you've just made Zelda Breath of the Wild again. <laughs> so well, I have a counter to this too. Warzone. So mm. I remember in 2019 or 2020 when it came out, 2020, when the first Warzone came out, everyone was like, battle royales are done. Huh. Everyone hates battle royales. They're trash. Because I remember thinking, I was like, really? We all hate Battle Royales? And we're like, yes, they're garbage. <laughs> and then Warzone went on to make $500 million, like an insane amount of money. And it was because they made it free to play, but also it's really good. They made a good game mode. Fact of the matter is, just make a good game, it'll sell. It doesn't matter what, it, what the bug it is, if it's single player or looter shooter or whatever else, it's going to sell. Um, that's basically what it boils down to. Because uh, I promise you, if they release another Battle Royale, and everyone's like, Battle Royale, they're out. Tired of them. Stupid. And if it's good and everybody plays it, it won't matter. So That's the that's definitely an, a thing that I've noticed, and it, it does give me a lot of, of heart, is that bad games do not sell well. There's, there's like a yeah. weird, dis well, Pokemon. But there's a weird <laughs> disconnect between, like, <laughs> the games that people think sell well and the ones that do sell well. And, yeah, the ones that bust into upper territories, like, they don't really get there by being bad. FIFA, Madden. Um, those are those are edge cases, I guess. But uh, but yeah, um, there hasn't. And that goes back to the idea that like people have to battle for the soul of video games on the Internet. <laughs> the market actually is pretty, pretty dialed in to what works and what doesn't. Yeah, uh, and sometimes that requires admitting that some people have bad taste. Uh, just go. People keep buying FIFA, whatever. They got their money. They want to spend it. Yeah. I mean, that's what they want. So they get it. But like, I guess Diablo Immortal made a lot of money, but there's not like a lot of wretched games that do super well that then inspire a whole raft of copycats that it seems like everybody's worried about so i would i would people are probably screaming at their monitors mobile games and the fact of the matter is i generally don't think like if a mobile game is succeeding it's usually not a bad game yeah and it happens over there that's that too well but they again they're arguing for the soul of video games oh i see so the mobile games are they're killing the soul of video games uh well uh, yeah fifa <laughs> i i think star wars battlefront 2 is like the biggest casualty I can see of that, of just over monetization actually trampling everything. I would agree. But Dead Space 3, like you got to dig pretty hard to find something else, I think. Battlefront is a good example, but I, I mean, but they made that game better. And in, in a year's time, it was actually really fun to play. Was it gamer so. pushback that did it first? Did the I, gamers win because I, they complained so much? I, I think absolutely in, in terms of the microtransactions, yes. However, I don't know what their sales were when the game was released. So I don't know if their sales were really bad and then they went up because probably not. Um, what, what, what probably happened was the sales weren't very good to begin with and they're just like, well, fuck it. We got to make this something. We can't just abandon it. But same with the uh, Battlefield 2042. Yeah, 2042. They can't just because they couldn't. They can't just abandon it. But 2042 did not sell great. <laughs> um, they said that they were disappointed in the sales of Battlefield 2042. So probably the same with Star Wars Battlefront 2. So at that point, you're just, it's just pub, like public image. You're just salvaging for public image. You're not necessarily being like, well, now we got to make more money on it. It's like, no, they, if, if they thought that they would just scrap it and make another game. Um, but they're just trying to salvage at that point. So I'm kind of surprised they didn't. And maybe that's, maybe that's where it comes from. Maybe that's where gamer heat, uh, on the internet matters is that sometimes companies do feel like they have to make that investment. So. Maybe, but I don't think maybe, so. And I'll tell, you, I'll tell you oh. why. Um, I'll tell you why. 
because EA admitted that they, with Battlefield, it, they do this with every Battlefield. Oh, yeah, they did. They That's said. True. They said it out loud. The community is willing to take years of changes and years of improvements because they've always done that. That's what EA said. So EA knows that. So they know when they release a game that's not perfect, they know they're going to get heat. They don't give a fuck, right? They don't because yeah, yeah. they've, they've been doing it for years. So it's like <laughs> they know. And they, EA, uh, again, to their credit, I guess, whatever, they were like, uh, we've been doing this with Battlefield for years. You know, normally the community's willing to do this. This time around, I guess they weren't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Well, I, it's interesting, too, because uh, I, think, I think that's true. Uh, I think the community got fed up. I hope so. And, yeah. and I think that's kind of true in a larger case. I think that's why some of the reactions to Redfall have been so heated. On top of it being fun to laugh at. I'm not stupid. I get it. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I, it's, you know, it's weird. <laughs> well, it's there's weird. more games than ever. And yet s- still there's a perception that games are getting worse. Yeah, that's true. And I think, <laughs> and I do think it's because it's just a volume thing. Uh, and I kind of, I kind of laid out that, that theory on inside games, but if you're looking for the bad stuff, or I think more specifically, if there's a series of systems that encourage and elevate the highlighting of the bad stuff, mm. you know, so YouTube compilations and, and Reddit posts and stuff right. that all make something seem so terrible. If that's what gets shoved in front of your face, it's only natural that your perception would be that everything's getting shitty and bad. And then that gets you in a bad mood and then you go and type a comment. Somebody else sees that. It goes on and on. So maybe maybe that's it. I just can't find... Man, if Fred falls bad, I'm like, all right, on to the next one. I, I got, I've I got seen a backlog, it, man. I've seen it described. This is, uh, Lawrence, I was told that we were out of touch many times mm. in the comments. Yeah. Which, um, I'll tell you why. It's kind of good, actually. I'll tell you why. <laughs> it's true. I'll tell you why we were out of touch. Because, like you said, while well, Red falls bad, on to the next one. Everyone was like, I have been saving for six months. And I spent $70 on Redfall. I challenge you to find one person that did this, by the way. But I saw this in the comments. I, I've saved for six months. I spent my $70 on Redfall and it's bad. And I wasted my $70. Number one, I don't know anybody that's ever done that. Find me one example. Also, if you save for six months, wouldn't you watch a stream for like 10 minutes before you buy the game? Those are free. Absolutely, yes. Streams are free. Maybe you don't have internet. But also, you get a refund in, in two hours. You get, a, you get a fucking refund. If I saved for six months for $70 and was like, this is the one game I want, Redfall. Also, were you stupid enough to buy it on Steam after you saved for six months for $70 when you never noticed it was on Game Pass? Are you kidding? Don't bullshit me. So I have many things that I can throw at you, but I saw that. Bruce and Lawrence are out of touch. People can only buy two games a year. That also means you've you're got 11 bucks a month that you're clearing. You can afford Game Pass on that. That's you, could right. have had game, you could have had Game Pass for six months and Redfall at the end. I know. People... Again, people, they say, Lawrence and Bruce, they get video games for free. Uh, even though I spent $70 on Jedi Survivor. And sometimes, yeah. I'm, and, I'm, and I'm trying and to I have, up the email accounts. I want these free games. I, I was saying, and I have a Game Pass subscription. Um, <laughs> but they say, Lawrence and Bruce get these games for free. We can only buy two games a year. I get that. So I bought Redfall. No, one's, no one did that. Don't lie to me. Don't you dare lie to me and say that someone... Won- oh, a week before tears of the game. No one fucking did that and didn't watch any streams, <laughs> read any reviews, didn't get a refund, and didn't buy it on Game Pass? That's bullshit. Caveat of tour, my man. That's bullshit. Was the system working as intended? <laughs> yeah, there's... Anyways. That's- sometimes it's like... Like, <laughs> the sentiment has to be that it, it shouldn't be allowable that somebody can make a bad decision with their money. That happens all the fucking time. Yeah, it, it should happen sometimes. Like the point of the market is not to make every every product as good as it can be for as little money. Like that seems to be what some people think should be the guiding principle. But my God, no. Uh, here, hold on. Yes, everyone thinks that right now. So Lawrence, what you're saying is that video games pro consumers should be the best they are at launch and and ten dollars. And we should be lobbying for that every release. Mm -hmm. It'll never happen. Better, cheaper, faster. It'll never, ever happen. In my lifetime or yours, it'll never happen unless we turn socialist. Just so you know. But that's what we are lobbying for. That's what we're arguing for the solo video games so that they're all free and the best they ever were. I don't know who's getting paid for the labor. (laughs) but Hopefully nobody. (laughs) But regardless, Us, that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're doing the real work. You and I are, but we're supposed to be lobbying for games to be cheaper, better, and 
perfect or something. I don't know. I'm not sure. That's 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 the out of touch thing is that um, and it goes kind of back to the, the, the video games are human now is that there's a, like there's an agreed upon line that everybody decides is is the right thing. They get in their little groups and they're like, we're mad. Right. And we have a right to be like we all tell each other it's fine. Right. OK, we all agree it's fine. Wait a minute. Who's this asshole? <laughs> we all agreed it's fine. Yeah, what? Yeah. How dare? So I don't know. Right. I'm kind of happy being outside of the, the video game discourse. <laughs> but boy, it's dumb. It's uh, it is weird to be. It's. I mean, honestly, it's and like uh, I, all the reasons that I see. It's like I was. You guys are getting rich off this. You get all these free game, video games. Like, it just means we're, we're we landed, Bruce. We're games journalists. Are you sure? I, I, how we? I don't see any of these things. I don't see the paychecks or the free video games. I think I did. I by the way, full disclosure, I got a free copy of Redfall on Steam. Just so you know, I already had the Game Pass subscription, so I would have downloaded it there. But I played it on Steam because I got the free copy. If you want a free copy of Redfall on Xbox, I have it. I'll give it to you. There you go. Oh, that's nice. Hit me up. One copy of Redfall, please. That, I'm curious to see who will hit me up. But either way, that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be arguing for every... I mean, and what, this is something that I said... I, it sounds stupid because we're old, but we, we've been through this a thousand times and we know that this is kind of the way the world works and it sucks. Sorry. We want, we want things to improve. We do. I do. I want things to improve. The way I, I make things improve in the system that we're in, I don't buy the video games. I don't pre-order. Uh, and I get refunds. Um, and if I'm really like something is desperately unplayable, if like the thing's fucking broken, I will tweet about it. And I'll say like, I can't play this video game because it's broken. Um, so maybe you could fix it. <laughs> it's usually what it boils down to. Also, uh, when I was having problems with uh, Time Warner and my internet connection for months, I filed a complaint with the Better Business Bureau. Filed a complaint. I said, and by the way, never got a response, but filed the complaint because that's what you do. You file a complaint with the Better Business Bureau and say like, they're charging me for something that I was not getting. Um, so that you could do that if you wanted to. I mean, the problem is, is Red Falls a video game and it worked for me. I played it. Playable. Yeah. But it wasn't for a lot of people, I guess. I played it on Xbox and it's like, it's not great, but I've, man, I've played worse. Maybe that's part of it, is I've, I've played so many Been games. around the block, yeah. Holy moly. I, man, you want to talk about saving up for eight months and buying a trash game. <laughs> uh, I did. It was a, here, let me look it up. It was a game <laughs> called Dino Wars. I remember, this was one of the first times that I was like, oh my god, advertising sucks. Because I remember there was a, oh, it's got a. Oh, with a Z oh, and a Y. And a y. I forgot oh, about the Y. Holy shit. Um, Destruction of Spondylus. Yeah, look at how cool. Look at how cool that is. There's two dinos, dino wars right there. Robot dinos. It looked like your little dude, and you run around. Wait, where are the dinosaurs? Oh, uh, they're later. You you got to be the dude first. You're like a little man, and then you get into your dino mech, and there's oh, a cool fucking cutscene, and then you're cool. in your dino mech. Okay, all right. You're walking around in space, and you can even like you've got rocket hands. Look at him punch him with his little T Rex. So, so is this good? No, it's terrible. Okay, right. this game sucks, dude. Uh huh. I was so amped for it because it's like you get Dino Max, like Power Rangers was hitting. I guess that's probably why I was super into it. <laughs> um, and the fact that it's like got on oh. foot gameplay and Mech Dino Mech. Oh, look at him punch that hand out. Did you learn a lesson? I did. What yeah. was the lesson? Uh that that just because a game looks cool in like a video doesn't mean it's good to play. Mm, good but uh, yeah they got me they got me that one and, and you didn't get a refund because you couldn't fuck no no i i would not even be allowed to express my disappointment because my parent like my dad would yell at me for being ungrateful let me ask you this right. uh did you get it on a subscription service like game pass no god no oh, no that's, that's great because it didn't exist right? it was like one of the two christmas presents i got because yeah, i asked right. for it specifically and my parents god bless them bought it new no. that's right because it didn't exist there no. was no game pass there was no refund no there was no digital refund you couldn't no. do that shit you had to go to a store yeah the refund is selling it to the video rental store that had one copy of zelda and and they never ever by the way they never took video games like that ever so like if I was like uh brought in an open video game it was like this is bad they'd be like fuck you <laughs> get out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but this is you know this is uh, uphill both ways through the snow talk so. it is but but I'm, it's one of those things where like we can see the improvements so we're sort of like hey things are getting a little better yeah I guess it's mostly just a pushback to to the notion that things are getting worse and you have to take action now before everything goes downhill forever which is again part of the Amway messaging take action <laughs> we want you to take action get a refund don't pre order uh you know. Spend uh, money on a good game. Fi spend money on Every a good game. Every time you're going to get mad, spend money on a good game that you like. File a complaint with a Better Business Bureau. Yeah, do that. Do that. Class do action it. suits. Yeah. Some of them sue. Work. Sue. Why not? 
Some of them work. Go hire a lawyer. Yeah. I'm totally fine with that. It's uh, that's that's one of the subtexts and and we need to wrap up because we're uh, we're about on time. Yeah, yeah. One of the subtexts that I see that I kind of understand is that feeling of powerlessness when you get when you get fucked or like you, there's it a sucks. game that you don't like. It sucks. But you can't change you can't change the world. You can't rewrite uni- the universe and make Redfall pray to even though God I wish. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe someday. Maybe someday. But you can't. You're right, Lawrence. You can't. Once Redfall's out, it's out. How could this game be bad? I don't know. You played it. Yeah. It's... <laughs> I'm trying to remember. <laughs> It seems good, right? It does seem, I mean, as good as any I mean, other NES Nintendo game, game yeah. was. Yeah. You're running, you're shooting, you got a gun. What's there to what's there to not like? I think it's bad. Though. Don't play Dino Wars. That's that's your inside games cast challenge of the month. <laughs> <laughs> Get through May without playing Dino Wars. The, what was it called? Destruction of Spondylus. How do you remember that? I don't know. Destruction of Spondylus. Yeah, you got gamer brain now, Bruce. It's in there. Destruction of Spondylus. Don't play that. Spondylus. There was a password though. You could look it up. And like maybe get a cheat and maybe it would be more fun if you got the cheats. That's what I used to think about bad games. There's an ice world? Oh, you never got that far. No, no way. How far did I get? Look at the walkthrough. only 33 minutes. Yeah. Also, in the best case scenario, <laughs> you just bought an a NES game for 80 fucking or for 50 80s dollars. Again, Lawrence, look, we're improving. The world's improving. And it lasts 30 minutes. You're totally right. If it's good. <laughs> you're, totally, you're totally right, Lawrence, that this is uphill both ways. <laughs> so we are getting better. Things are getting better. We can get refunds now. There's Game Pass, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, so utilize the tools at your disposal to make sure they know that Redfall is bad. Screaming about it on Reddit. T- uh, making fun of my tank top. That's a tool. Yeah, don't make fun of Bruce's tank making top. Making fun of my personal appearance, making fun of Lawrence's personal appearance, which I saw. Wait, people made fun of my appearance? Absolutely. Oh, come which on. I saw multiple you can make fun of Bruce, but you made, <laughs> you made fun of me? Which I saw multiple times in our comments. Oh. It's not changing a thing. Man, I just didn't look. You know what? It really it reminded me of the old days a little bit. It reminded me of 2013 YouTube. You know what I did was I went through really quick to end the podcast <laughs> uh, as my daily therapy. I went through and shadow banned a bunch of those people. Oh, yeah? Just got rid of him, so I'll never see him again. Thanks for the views, though. <laughs> and thanks for the view on this. I hope you cleared that dungeon or got a Korok seed or whatever the heck you were working on. <laughs> Hopefully your giant, like, mobile clam mobile. It looks like a vagina. Oh, yeah, yeah. For sure, they made, they made a vagina. Can yeah. you make... Hopefully you can make things pulse, like vibrate. Sure you can. Surely you can. Why not? Yeah. All right. Until next month, thank you, everyone. Thank you all Inside Games viewers. You're the real gamers out there.